Hi, I'm Tom Platt. Welcome to Hollywood, California, Universal Studios, site of the 1988 Mr. Olympia contest. Bodybuilders from all over the world are here to compete tonight for the Mr. Olympia contest, bodybuilding's most prestigious event. The favorite tonight, of course, is Mr. Olympia, Lee Haney. Lee Haney has won it four times in a row. Can he win it five times? And can he ever dream of coming close to matching Arnold Schwarzenegger's record of winning it seven times? Sit down, sit down. Over the years, we've heard a lot about the weights of the bodybuilders in the magazines, and there's a lot of speculation. This year, it's gonna be official. You'll see them, and you'll know what they weigh. Take your seats, gentlemen. First bodybuilder, Rich Gasparri. Rich's focus this year was reducing his body weight uh, over, uh, over last year. He felt it was too heavy last year and appeared too blocky on stage. And making his waist look small, he feels he'll be able to uh, be more of a threat, more of a viable threat to, to Lee. 209 and a half pounds. I'm going into this show going in the best that I can be, and that's what I want to do. I want to go in to this show with people saying, man, Gasparri looked phenomenal. Gasparri was the best shape I've ever seen him. You know, and to me, that's more satisfaction than winning this contest. But, <laughs> you know, I was saying this the whole way training for this contest, but now it comes down to the wire and I want to win. I want to win this thing bad. I feel that I've improved my symmetry. I kept that mass in my upper body, but I lost it all in the waist. So now I have a more of a streamlined physique, having a smaller waist, but a thicker upper body, a thicker back. Everyone says my back's improved and my arms have improved. Plus, I think with time and maturity, competing in the Mr. Olympia, I started competing in the Mr. Olympia at 22 years old. It's relatively young. And being that young, I feel my muscles haven't matured yet. Now being 25, they, they seem to look a lot more mature. You know, I have more of that density, but I still think I haven't reached my peak. You know, I still feel that I can continue to keep getting better to at least 30, 35. Gaspari uh, reminds me a lot of Frank Zane in the old days. Uh, places uh, importance on every single detail, no matter how minute it may be. About four ounces for you, Gerard. He's a very educated bodybuilder in terms of, of the scientific data and how to apply it to himself, uh, which is probably the reason he looks like he does. Yeah, I cook for my he has more uh, detail, and he works with his genetics probably better than anyone in the contest, especially when it comes down to, to the top three or the top two, and little, little bitty details become very big details. No, I'm cooking this one. This is artichoke noodles. It doesn't have any wheat in it, and I don't eat any wheat products right now before a show. Because wheat has, uh, it's called gluten, and a lot of times gluten can make you uh, hold the estrogen, and that can make you retain water. What is estrogen? Estrogen is a female hormone. I don't want any of that in my body right, right now. <laughs> I'm not depleting now. All the other guys are killing themselves. I was ready a month ago. And basically what I did is just stay on my diet and let myself get harder and harder. The week before a show, what I do is basically watch my sodium level the last two days before, and that's all I do. You know, I've been a pro now since 1984, and I've tried every diet, you know, carb depletion, sodium loading, carb loading, and the best diet for me is, like, everyone usually says, like, a week out, I always look my best. If I go on a carb depletion, the only thing I'm going to do is end up eating my muscle away, and then I'm going to start carving up. And if you don't carb up enough, you're gonna end up looking flat for the show. If you carb up too much, you're gonna end up holding water. So what I do is try to just stay on a steady calorie intake 
And if it looks like I'm losing weight, I'll increase the calories. If it looks like I'm gaining weight, I'll decrease the calories. And that's basically what I do. The last week, I tried to drink a lot of water, a lot of distilled water, to flush out any impurities in my body. The last two days, I watched my sodium intake, mostly by cutting out foods like egg whites, which have a high amount of sodium. And that's about it, the two days before the show. And that's all I do. Well, my fish is cooking, steaming away, some orange roughy. Here I am. The fish, doesn't that look good? <laughs> I set a new standard in the sport where you have to be almost ultra ripped and it's to a point where now I have to live up to my standard. If I come in a show slightly off, even though I'm still more ripped than the other competitors, if I'm not Gaspari ripped, it means I'm smooth. I see many bodybuilders you know, they're coming in really ripped, but they're fainting backstage or they're cramping up because what they're doing is they're trying to get themselves ripped and then they end up taking diuretics, dangerous diuretics, which I never do. They lose all the water, their skin looks really tight and they're ripped, but a lot of times the day after a show, they start drinking and eating and they'll blow up like balloons. I think a lot of the knowledge I learned from dieting was me reading books. I try to get as many books as I can on dieting. You know, I get books, handbooks, of the nutritional uh, contents of food here. Has a listing of all different foods, telling you exactly how many calories, carbs, fats, sodiums. And I read all kinds of books on nutrition and you know anything to do with nutrition or supplementation, I read about. And I think that's what's helped me out a lot in my dieting. And just me experimenting with my body, I've learned what works for me. The skin there is it's not much left on it. And usually this is the place where you hold water because with gravity, you know, the, the water usually goes right down to your, your ankles. But you can see right here that there's no water that I'm holding now. And it's five days before the show. So I feel that I'm ready <laughs> for this one. One thing I notice about Rich Gaspari is that he has a very strong center. He believes in Rich Gaspari and he demands that Rich Gaspari be better than Rich Gaspari at all moments. And that, to me, is one of the definite trademarks of a champion. Being a bodybuilder like I am, and being the way I am, I'm very, very much focused. And a lot of times, I got to sacrifice a lot, even, even in being in relationships where, you know, with, you know, having my girlfriend, I, I think about being in the Mr. Olympia and not think about you know people's feelings almost and I'm almost like feelingless because I go into this contest and nothing else matters and it gets almost bad that way because this is the type of attitude I have when I'm getting ready for a contest but after a contest I have to basically just let my mind free and be a normal person gentleman himself, Barry DeMay. Barry DeMay. Barry's been training in California for the last month or two, maybe more. Barry DeMay. This guy looks ready. I've never seen him in this kind of condition. Want to take the microphone? This is interesting to note in, in Samir's history. He already is Mr. Olympia. And in my opinion, he has more gen genetic talent than anyone on that stage. Yo, what's up, Peter Fat Boys? This is me and Pete right here. We got Lee Haney inside, four time Mr. Olympia. And we're going for the fifth time. We're here to celebrate with him, you know what I'm saying? We're helping him fight. But he got a competition in hand. He got buff on hand, you know what I'm saying? But buff gonna win the Mr. Olympia contest. Right. Hey, buff. Punch that eye, boy. No pain, no gain. How can you do that, man? I'm ready, man. How can he beat me? I allowed Lee Haney to win the Mr. Olympia. 1984, I said, Lee Haney, Come on in. I made a major mistake. I said, welcome, Lee Haney, you can have the Olympia. And then I haven't competed with him for 
three consecutive years. Have you ever competed against him in one? I won. He won one, and I won one. And right now, the winner take it all, you know? So Lee Haney's animal kingdom would be ruled by a lion. <laughs> Samir, two weeks, three weeks before the Mr. Olympia looked absolutely perfect. He was the winner in my mind and everybody else's mind. I was very cut at the body weight of 212, and Dr. Spatini yeah. is here witnessing what I'm saying. I was cut up at 212, very, very cut up. And right now my goal is uh, to, to be on September 10th about 208. Right now I'm 202, my reserve is totally out which is one of my procedures. You know, I deplete all glycogen from the muscle. No so excess have... water in your body at all, not uh, even in the muscle. <laughs> I believe it or not, I mean, I don't know if this face can tell you something, you know, it just, uh, I feel like I was in a concentration camp. <laughs> to train when you're depleted, you, you have no energy. Uh, the weight goes up and down, but you don't feel it. Uh, you don't get a pump at all. <laughs> Depletion, as far as what it does to the mind, you don't have a lot of sugar, a lot of glycogen to, to the brain, and you get all very uh, tired and foggy, and you get confused. Uh, this depletion thing is difficult, mentally. Ah! It's really weird, though. I hear it from so many people. I'm, of course, I don't know if Tegan will share that with me. It's, it's a human nature. When you can't have something, something, you want it. You know, when I'm off, when off season, you, I see the ice cream or the cake, I really don't care for it. But after one week of diet, Jesus Christ, I want to give me that. I want to eat anything. Haney has to train very hard. He has to be very, very ready to take a good second. Now that Mike Christian, who took fourth in last year's Mr. O, is out of the lineup, how do you think you're going to place next Saturday? Forget it. Mike Christian was never on my mind, and he'll never be. And this, as far as I'm concerned, he claimed that I bark and I don't bite, but who is he to say that I'm Mr. Olympia? He hasn't won nothing. To me, he hasn't beaten Lee Haney. He hasn't even taken one first spot from Lee Haney. When you want to open your mouth, you better be somebody before you talk. And so, you know, he was never on my mind. And uh, I think he's a great champion, but definitely he's not in my caliber. You want to see the legs? Nice. Is that good enough? Like that? And here's the calves. Here's another one. I've been with him um, prior to contests before, and we just, you know, we try to find different ways to release all the tension and stress that he's under and uh, just take things in stride. It's all you can do. We prepare meals for him and uh, see to it that he has what he wants at the time he wants it. and. I'm just there to help him whenever he needs my help. <laughs> my wife and I, we're going to go to the health food store, pick up some low-sodium low stuff, lima beans and uh, special pastas and uh, all these distilled water, little tricks that we do usually on nutrition. So we're on our way. Ralph Muller. He towers over the rest of the lineup. What is he, 6'7", I think? 288 pounds. 288 pounds. Our next competitor, Albert Beckers. Albert is our youngest competitor. Isn't it amazing how a guy that's 58 years old can look this good? Geez, I hope to be living at age 58 rather than be competing for the Olympia title. 200 pounds even. Luis Fritas. He's from Brazil, now training in California. This also is his first Mr. Olympia. He just won the universe. His father is a, a very uh, prominent industrialist in, in, in Brazil. Weighs in at 219 and a half. And this is his first debut in the Mr. Olympia contest. It's like, you know, this is what you read about in the magazines for years, and here you are up there with all the guys. It's a tremendous feeling just to be up there with the guys. The next feeling is to actually win the show. Number 20. Muscle for me means a little bit of art. And I remember when I was really young, I wanted to be a dancer. And my dad said that if I, if I would go to dancing, 
you know, he would disown me as a kid. And I was five years old because he said it would be only for homosexuals. So, uh, you see, my dad is very conservative and o very old fashioned. So, but I had that dancing and that uh, body behavior inside of me. I wanted to express my, my, my body somehow. And I found myself doing that after, you know, long years in sport. In bodybuilding, because I go on stage and I pose, that's the closest thing to dancing. He's one of the kind of kind of vibe that I like to watch train. Energy would come from nowhere, and it'd keep going and going and going. It seemed, like it, it seemed like it was almost ready to quit, and there was no more energy left, and all of a sudden, more energy would come, and it'd keep going. It was a, it's a, it's a, fun, a fun guy to watch train. It reminds me of Mike Menser. Reminds me of Casey Vader. The kind of guys that uh, would just go when, when everyone else would quit. Muscle is just one of my attributes, but there are other edges that you also have to work along with your body, and that's my spiritual and my mental too. In order to believe that you can do something, you have to have knowledge and you have to have faith. I was depleted until this morning. Excuse me. You're flat now, then. Right? Yeah, pretty flat. I've been coming from a four days carb depletion. I had a half of a yam and a little bowl like this of uh, oatmeal. Are you hungry? And, no. My stomach's really what? shrunk. Let's see it. Let's <laughs> see an abstract. Oh my God. Now when you fill up with carbohydrates, that's gonna be much larger, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, just the skin is gonna stretch. Inflate. Inflate and you know, I get tighter all over. You got it. Did Samir Banut give you that Christmas tree back there? <laughs> yeah, now he's jealous about it. Well, Brian Buchanan, the smallest waistline I have ever seen on, on a guy 210 that big. 10 pounds, 210. Our next competitor from France, Mr. Eduardo Kawak, 215 pounds. Eduardo Kowak. Each muscle looks like it's just packed on other muscles. It's a look as if he's ready to explode with power. There's no free space. There's no absence of muscle. Uh, it's almost too much <laughs> in, in, at times. He came from the NABA Federation, by the way, over to the IFBB, and he was a tremendous pro champion in, in, in NABA. I was always impressed with his pictures um, from the, the NABA contest. I always looked at those pictures and I thought, my God, here's a guy that could do it. This is his best year. I mean, 1988, we see him finally coming into his own in the IFBB. He, he was unbelievable. I have never seen him look this good. And he can tell he knew it. Too. He, he knew it, but when you look in his eye, he knew he was in shape. Now, here's a guy that I think has enough muscle to place in the top 10, most definitely, most substantially. Uh, he may have been overlooked by the judges. One interesting point about Eduardo's system of training is that he eats a phenomenal amount of food. I remember going to the island of uh, Mauritius Island. I guess I was there one time. And before I went there, the first bodybuilder to visit that island was Eduardo. And uh, everyone thought that, God, I'm a bodybuilder, so I must eat just like Eduardo did. And the, fact, the truth is, I don't. I don't eat 12 day egg omelets. I eat you know, maybe two, okay? They were totally mystified by the fact that I didn't eat as much. Lee Labrada. I understand Lee has been spending time with Frank Zane in Palm Springs. Uh, apparently, uh, some last minute advice took place this week between Frank and Lee. We'll see what happens to, uh, on Saturday night. 176 pounds. That's a lot the of feeling I, I get when I watch Lee pose is that he is a master. 
every movement is a precision movement and he has nothing to doubt leaves no doubt in your mind that he is a professional that he is a champion and you should treat him as such next our black prince mr robbie robinson robbie robinson the legend robbie's been around i think maybe longer than beckles robbie from california is a veteran of mr olympia it's interesting to note that uh, robbie uh, is a strong inspiration to lee haney 216 and a half 216 pounds and a half gary stratum the great white hope the next big white man i mean and gary is big i think that he's actually held off purposely from competing in the mr olympia to try to groom himself uh, to do the very best he can upon his first entry to the mr olympia 229 <laughs> big, he's strong, he's ferocious, he has that kind of attitude, and uh, I think that uh, he has the potential to win the Mr. Olympia. I mean, you know, I notice his triceps all the time, and his delts, and tremendous thickness in his biceps. Um, his chest is, is huge and deep. Uh, I think the upper body uh, resembles and has a feeling uh, like that of arms. We're all products. Every bodybuilder is a product that must be sold to the marketplace. Gary Stratum realizes this, that he has to package himself the best he can be packaged and market himself and present himself to the marketplace to be bought and to be sold as Mr. Olympia. I mean, if you don't know about a product, you're not going to buy it. And Gary's aware of this. It's, it's a very simple thing, yet I think he does it very well. Everything I've done leading up to this condition that I have uh, has been 100% uh, dedication. I mean, dedicating my time in the gym and out of the gym towards my physique. It's a very demanding sport. It's probably the most demanding sport around because it's 24 hours a day, nonstop. You take it wherever you go. Uh, Psychologically, it's, it's wherever you go. Physically, it's wherever you go. So the environment uh, can weaken you. And uh, there's so many people out there that are weak today, that don't have discipline, uh, that can discourage you. So you've got to surround yourself with positive people constantly. And this is what I've done. And uh, this is, I think this is uh, the, the main contributions towards my success. try and create illusion as far as waist. The smaller, the smaller your waist looks, the bigger your shoulders get and vice versa. The bigger your shoulders get. See? My training schedule pretty much is twice a day, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. My training is very intense. I come to the gym to train, train only. There's no talking, no hanging out, no visiting. Um, I'm all business when I get in the gym and I start lifting weights. Diet, a lot of people ask me about diet. They ask me how much percent is diet, how much percent is training? Well, training is 100%, of course, but diet is the other 100%. There's no 20% or 50% one, 50% the other. I eat a uh, high carbohydrate, high protein diet, very low fat uh, throughout the, the year. Uh, tremendous amount of calories because of the metabolism I have. I have a very fast metabolism. I'm very tall and uh, I've got a big structure. So I need seven meals a day and it's all timed around eating every two, three hours. And it pretty much got to be close to 1,000 calories each if I'm going to be eating 7,000 calories a day. I eat 7,000 in the off season and progressively bring it down to the lowest, which is anywhere between 3,500, 4,000 calories per contest. Just to maintain, I practically got to eat 4,000 calories a day.
guys. Yeah, Gary, stay right where you. That's your spot. Yeah. Oh, something like just like this. Here, here. After you take the shot, you can wrap up. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's nice. Well, then we'll go back and do it. Okay, studio. it's gonna be quick, okay. guys. Let's okay, do it let's now. Go. There you go. Look at that. They're great. That's great. Hold my leg. Nice. Yeah. 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 One more. Yeah, you put your knee down. That's good, that's good, like that, Kim. Okay, let's get it. Yeah, so there you go. Okay, let me get that one again. Hang on. do what you're doing, babe. Everything's high. Okay, let's do this next shot twice again, okay? I'm right up here, not there. One. Yeah. yeah okay, Cam. Nice. Yeah. Smile. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Let's kind of move you guys. Towel them up. And let's get get a, a different pose going. Cam, you don't cover the bicep. Yeah. Get there you go. Up. That's there you good. Go. You got it. Okay. Ready? Good. One, two, three. That's a wrap. We're out of here. Sean Ray, uh, one of our very young competitors, I think that he may very well be Mr. Olympia someday. 201 and a half. Bob Paris. Bob Paris is one of the truly seasoned professionals of our day. I think he's a little bit ahead of his time right now. I, mean, I don't think that the bodybuilding world is ready to accept a GQ good looking type guy who will represent the, the 90s bodybuilder. Bob's weight is 226, 226 pounds. Bob has a, a deep-rooted sense of professionalism that he exhibits everywhere he goes. The way he carries himself, the way he shakes hands with the people, the eye contact he makes. And he feels, he feels very confident about himself, and he likes himself. And when you identify with Bob on stage, you like yourself too, because he likes himself. I mean, the girls ooh over Bob, and everybody feels that kind of an earthy kind of a guy that works from a, a center of confidence. And I think that's Bob Paris. Bob's an artist, an artist molding a very pleasing physique. He reminds me of Steve Reeves, modern day Steve Reeves. What I'm trying to present when I'm working in an artistic realm is the beauty of the human form. And I try to get across more than just the two-dimensional that's on the piece of, of paper. And I'm trying to put a personality across. And I think that's one of my main strengths as a bodybuilder is that I, I can cross over to a general public market and appeal to not only the hardcore bodybuilding fan, which I am very much a hardcore bodybuilder, but also to, to the artistic fan and to the person walking down the street uh, won't be offended by, by my physique, but yet it can still, it still has the ability to be a Mr. Olympia. Obviously, I wouldn't be going through all this if I didn't expect that I was going to uh, win a competition, but I also train with a with a picture in my mind of the perfect physique as it re as it relates to me. And so when I when I'm training, I'm picturing that perfect physique and trying to attain that. Um, if that happens to coincide with what the judges want, then that's fantastic. Um, but when the bottom when it comes down to the bottom line, I guess uh, in coming back to bodybuilding now and, and training again, my bottom line is to win the Mr. Olympia. I mean, that's the, the big draw that, that brings me back to it. Any of the guys who place in the top 10 could very well win it someday. I mean, Bob Paris is no exception. Bob Paris would make a great Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Uh, he'd be a great spokesman and a great representative. Uh, although, uh, his time has not come yet. And I think that's one of the reasons he's back. Bob Paris announced retirement, and he's back. I think the reason is he's back is because he wasn't allowed, or he didn't allow himself to, to really tap his full potential. I was um, interested in pursuing some other activities and kind of burned out, uh, kind of frustrated, feeling like I, I wasn't really advancing and had a real need to refresh myself in some way. Not in, not in a bodybuilding sense, but inside myself. I need to, to grow some more. I just really appreciate the great support that all the fans have really shown. In the couple of years I was away from the sport, 
uh, a tremendous amount of support and curiosity as to what I was doing. I hope to be able to give back a little bit of pleasure to those people who really give and lend support to, to my career. Just a block away from Gold's Gym is this towering cathedral, the New World Gym. Designed by Joe Gold, the same man who brought you the original Gold's Gym, here's where Arnold Schwarzenegger, seven-time Mr. Olympia, built his biceps. He continues to train here today. Okay, one more. Last one. Come on. Okay. Great. Victor Richards is probably the most awesome creature to walk the face of Venice and Santa Monica. To see him having lunch is a, a sight to be seen. When he, when he grabs the fork and attempts to cut his steak, it's like his triceps ripple. It's what every bodybuilder dreams of looking like. I would say to win contests, he would need to have more polish, need to have more finesse. In fact, need to have experience walking on stage. And posing. It's a different thing. There's, there's a gym body and there's a stage body. Some bodybuilders look absolutely godlike in the gym and then get on stage and all of a sudden they just don't look as good. How long have you been bodybuilding, Victor? I've been training for five to six years. You're known as Mr. Big to the whole world. Why isn't Victor Richards going into the Olympia? Uh, because I believe before you could be able to compete with other people, you gotta be able to compete with yourself first. And I believe, just like to learn more about other people, you gotta know who you are. I think too many people are so busy competing with other people instead of putting the time to learn who they are and competing with themselves first. I'm trying to perfect myself first before I could compete. I'm not doing this for approval. You have to understand, before I started training, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding. This is just what I was doing for happiness, and I don't wanna take the happiness away because I don't know what it's like to take a day off. If I take a day off, I'm miserable. It's just like taking baby, it's like taking a baby bottle away from the baby if I don't train. For me, this is a meditation. This is a ritual between my mind and my body, you know? So. Win the Mr. Olympia. The best man. I think the best man should win. Whoever comes in and should that night should win it. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Okay, take care. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, take Just one. Looking for the camera. One, two, three. Yes. One, two, three. Yes. The head will be up. One, two, three. Yes. That's good. Well, the full term is androgenic anabolic steroid. Androgenic means male hormone-like, anabolic means to build, and steroid is a class of drugs that these are. These are derivatives of cholesterol. Your body has male hormones in it, derivatives of testosterone. And these drugs are manufactured synthetically, and we use them in medicine for people who have certain types of anemias or different types of diseases. The athletes, unfortunately, use these hormone drugs in order to enhance their growth of muscle, their ability to retain weight, nitrogen, and all these different elements that they retain. I have to be quite truthful with you. I only use anabolic. I'm not going to have to deny it because uh, all, all the other Miss Olympia contender, I feel that they are using it, and I only use it for the, the fact to reverse catabolic effect, you know? I don't use steroids to be a monster because I don't think monsters win. There's no way of stopping anyone from doing any action that they wish to do. It's just like a diabetic who likes to sneak chocolate cake. They shouldn't eat the chocolate cake, but they're going to do it anyway, but you'll still take care of them to try and manage their diabetes. What I try and do is pick up the health problems in the athletes early enough before it becomes a fatal or a chronic serious injury. Uh, I'm in the gym, and I've been in the gym for 12 years, and I've seen young kids or people that don't even look like anything, you know, they start taking steroids, and they're taking dosages that, you know, a champion bodybuilder would never even take, and they still don't look like anything. So if you feel that steroids are going to make you a champion, they're not. It's sad to say that it's gotten out of proportion now. You know, it was something before that it was almost like a, a clique that only bodybuilders knew about. 
And now everybody knows about steroids, and now steroids are becoming almost like cocaine. It's coming that bad. You see, the guys that make it to the Mr. Olympia are already genetic superior beings to begin with. That's why they've made it this far. The people who get hurt the worst are the young kids coming up who aren't so genetically superior because they're going to take five times as much as these guys to try and get anywhere near where these guys are. And that's the patient population that would be most severely damaged overall. I said it before and I say it again. If you eliminate, eliminate anabolic steroids from all the athletes at one time, the champion will remain the champion. You know, and I really think um, we better off without them, honestly. There's one athlete, uh, Paul Jean Gillian, who is just in a recent pro contest, and he's in the top 10 or 15 in the world. And after a recent competition, he wanted to be tested. He came to me, I didn't go to him. And I tested him the next day, right after the competition, and he was negative. He also won the world championships where he was tested. So there are these genetic freaks, so to speak, or these superior genetic specimens that will gradually come to surface. I put a bet that I take a drug test any time. If I flunk it, I give anybody $10,000. I give them $100,000 if they want to. It's just I won't flunk the test because I never take drugs. People keep saying, well, you come off of it. I didn't come off no drug for the universe. I have never taken drugs. I competed a meal away for since 1980. I think the main thing about natural bodybuilding is you have to train all the time. You can't take two or three months off and then try to come back. You have to eat good all the time. And it's become like a self-discipline. You got to really want it. I'm not looking to risk my health for, you know, glory. You know, I, the body is supposed to be an athletic sport. It's supposed to be very healthy, low, low blood pressure, not high blood pressure. The guy have high blood pressure. They're losing their hair. You know, they look, oh, I'm 28. I'll be 28 September 17, and I don't look 28. I got guys that my age look older. And, you know, I, to me, I appreciate what I do. The drugs do work. Um, that was a mistake the medical community made in that they said that the drugs do not enhance performance. The athletes knew they enhanced performance, so now when we tell them, well, the drugs will also hurt you, they say, well, you lied to us about this part. Why should we believe you about this part now? Uh, the drugs do make a difference, whether it's 2% or 5% or whatever. There is a definitive advantage. However, they don't get to keep the advantage. For instance, an athlete takes these, he might shoot up quick, but it'll come down quick also, where an athlete that trains naturally will come up slower, go even beyond where the other athlete and then stay at this high level for a longer period of time mm -hmm. and begin a gradual decline. These athletes will burn out much earlier. When the bodybuilders of yesteryear did take steroids, they didn't take them in the massive dosages that the bodybuilders today are taking. You know, steroids are just a finishing touch for the bodybuilder. And the thing is, more is not better. So that's the, that's the thing on steroids. It's not the steroids that make a champion, but it's the hard training, the dedication, the dieting, the sacrifice, and the genetics that that person has what makes that champion. Drugs is ungefähr so viel. Here, that's, that's so what viel. Drugs is? Uh -huh. Und das ist Arbeit. Harte Arbeit. Schwere, harte Arbeit. Hard work, very hard work. And this is only drugs. If you asked me four years ago, I didn't think we'd ever get a handle on this program, and now we have a very firm handle on it. I think we're going to continue to increase the number of drug-tested competitions, and if we can get bodybuilding to become an Olympic sport, it'll open up all new avenues for the sport financially as well as socially, and I think we'll eventually get our drug testing up to the top levels. But it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of money, and we'll see if the sport supports that. Hi everybody, my name is Lee Marshall and I'll bet a lot of you recognize my voice if you don't recognize my face. That's because for 25 years I was a sportscaster, eight years of those with KABC and the ABC radio network. It allowed me the opportunity to retire from radio and television and really do what I want to do, which is to be right here at the mecca of bodybuilding and getting involved in what I think is the most exciting of all sports and that is health, fitness, bodybuilding, getting strong, just creating a wonderful environment for people to be involved in. Everybody wants a Gold's Gym t-shirt. For example, uh, the new edition of Pro Wrestling Illustrated, a huge picture of Hulk Hogan, and what's he wearing? A Gold's Gym tank top. Now tell me what kid wouldn't want a Gold's Gym tank top after seeing Hulk Hogan wear one.
Christian is one of the mascots here at Gold's Gym. Are you a little disappointed he won't be there? Yeah, I am, because I really thought Mike could win it. I really did. And it's not because he's, you know, he's one of the homeboys. Hey, they asked me, why didn't you go on Olympia this year? I said, I had to work legs today. I can't miss a leg day. They say I have weak legs, I can't miss a leg day. What the hell? <laughs> Come on, baby. Uh, come on. Come on, I'll pour it. That's it. Uh, That's it. Come on, everybody. Everybody you got. There you go. There you go. Yeah. This is easy for you, man. Come on. Push it. Good. Beautiful. Come on, man. Don't quit on me now. You gotta work a little harder than the other guy, man. A little harder. Come on. That's it. Five. That's it. Now you want it. Six. Come on. Seven again. Five. Two. Easy. There you go. Three. Come on, Mike. Dig deep. Dig deep. Go a little further, man. Come on. A little further, Mike. Go past it. Come on. That's it. Every day. There you go. Give me another. Give me another. When you want it. This is first place right here. That's it. Beautiful. Real nice. Really nice. That's the leg workout. Mike, it's easy to see who wears the pants in your family, so to speak. What got you to design these big-legged drawers? Well, I was wearing some uh, other sweatpants that were very uncomfortable. The crotch was a little bit high. It fit very tight on guys with big thighs. The thighs were very tight and uncomfortable. So I wanted to design some uh, clothing wear that was very comfortable and uh, looked uh, different, crazy, wild, creative. Part of my Christian show the world uh, part well, of it. me asking you to drop your pants, Mike. How about just showing me some? <laughs> well, here's some of my uh, wild and crazy, crazy creative colors. These are called the block. They're neon colors and very wild. Uh, they show the maps, and it's got like maps of the world. Indian tan here. I'm very happy, I'm very content now. Even though I am a bit depressed that I'm not going into conscious. The conscious is two days away, and I'm starting to get a little depressed. But I think if my company's doing well, my family life is, is doing very well, and that's the important thing right now. Like I said, I have all my life to win Mr. Olympia, and I think I have what it takes to win the title. I'm very confident, I'm very secure, and I think security is the foundation before you can just go out and just go into a competition. You know, you have to have your mind and uh, mentally be prepared for it. So that's what I'm working on now, and uh, next year I plan on taking that title. I really believe I can take it. Whoever wins that title, Samir, Lee Haney, Bob Paris, uh, you know, Sean Ray or whoever. But some people believe you could have done it this year, and the reason you dropped out is after you saw Samir Banut's condition. Oh, wow, I've never heard that. Uh, Samir is looking very well, but he never worried me at all. Samir is 5'8", I'm 6'1". I think that answers the question. You got it. He'll be here next year. I'm going to blow him away. I want you guys to get that. Make sure you get that on the camera. Mike Christian is my meat next year. I'll get him next year. Watch it in Italy. Where's Lee Haney? Where? Watch, watch it in Italy. Watch him in Italy. Mike Christian, where is he? Where is he? He's selling real tickets. I'm going to kill him in Italy. I was great in 88. It'll be mine in 89. Let's see what Henny looks like. Well, he certainly looks big. He looks hard. He looks like he's ready. This may very well be his fifth win. Lee's symmetry looks, in fact, I think better than ever right now. Just standing there, Lee looks like the winner. 243 and a quarter pounds. So you're leaving now? Yeah, I'm gonna run back and okay, finish go ahead. carving up. Go ahead. How you doing, Have a break, Lee. <laughs> you say have a bite for me. Okay. <laughs> you're really cut up. Are you gonna make it this time? Okay. Yeah, I'm still I'll make it this time. <laughs> I think you've got the comp toughest competition in your life. I know, very. Yeah. It may look very looks great. Yeah, he's only one. Yeah, he really is, isn't he? There's four or five others that are I knock know. your eyes yeah. out. It's no. tough. Yeah. Okay, baby. Welcome number one. Let's go, let's go. Nobody's how you better. made it to the top. Nobody's better, baby. That's how you made it to the top, baby. Everybody right here. Go. This is all those chumps like Mike Christian and Risky Sparrow and Samir by New. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. What it takes to win the Mr. Olympia is total, total, absolute, total commitment. It's difficult to beat Lee Haney when you are Lee Haney, you know? How many times can you do it? How many times can you hit that nail on the head before it, you break the board? Come on. Get out of here. All right. There's still another 45 on that. 
You said, well, bags, purses, cases open, please. Who's your favorite for tonight? What do you say? No, we the no, 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 no. Number two and three? Two and um, Barry Janae yeah. and Rich Castell. Lee Haney. Haney. Oh, Lee Haney, no question. Second and third. Second, uh, probably gets Barry again. Third, watch for uh, Barry Janae. Looks better than he's ever looked. Nou, ik weet hoe ik moet doen, ga ik natuurlijk op deze, in deze trend uh, door en te uh, verbeteren. En volgend jaar ben ik zeker weer daar. Wat, wat zijn je toekomstplannen nou? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to um, do another seven grand prix in Europe. Uh, you, wanna, you prefer to speak English? It's fine. Yeah, well, I'm, I think I'm pretty much into that now. Okay. And um, it's crazy though, I'm Dutch. <laughs> But anyway, after that, They're gonna have Christmas, mm -hmm. and uh, after that, I'm. Uh, then I always have a period to, uh, I take it really easy for a month, and then I start my exhibitions and everything for the whole year. Seminars, that's where my income's from mainly. I feel, uh, you know, of course it's human, you know, right off the bat, not to feel too good about the placing, but uh, I take everything in stride, keep it, you know, keep it uh, in perspective. And I know that this is just uh, one small step in my uh, my long-term career. So next no year, no problem. And next year I'll be better. And I've got uh, six Grand Prix coming up here, seven Grand Prix actually in Europe. So I'm gonna get them back. I'm excited about it. It's my first appearance, and I uh, just look to getting better as I'm just touching on my potential and uh, wait for next year. I just shoot for the Olympia. This year I had to qualify. You know, it took a lot from me, and uh, it's it's just a matter of learning to know your body and uh, mature in every aspect of, of, of life. Um, I wasn't even ranked in the top 10 in the rankings coming into the show by the um, publicity. And mm -hmm. um, I proved the critics wrong, you know. You proud of your husband uh, to be? I couldn't be prouder. I'm just so ecstatic for him. Plans for the future? Um, Grand Prix and then starting a business, mm -hmm. books, videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm gonna get married, have a child, the whole bit. That's your wife? Yeah. Well, not yet. Make your wife to be? Yeah. They have a world tour coming. I'm thinking about canceling the world tour because I did so many shows last year. Uh huh. Uh, it's, you know, you just gotta like give yourself a break. I haven't had a vacation in 20 years. Uh huh. You know, so it's time to like just get out and take a vacation. So, That's some fun future, future plans. And maybe work my butt hard for next year's Mr. Olympia. Maybe handle the pro world and that's it. My eighth place. No way. No way. I don't know. Ask these guys. My eighth place was right? No, bro. Completely. Okay, well, here's uh, some witness here. <laughs> okay, but I wish everybody the best. I think they all look great. I mean, you know, I mean, the competition was very stiff. You have to admit. And um, that's it. I'm, I'm not a sore loser. I'll come back and win again. Okay? Thank you. All the best. Yo. Bye. I was happy to even just be there, really. Uh -huh. uh, I had a great time. Mm -hmm. Great competition. Yes, absolutely. Guys were uh, in fantastic oh, shape. How about next year? Next year, they're in trouble. I go back to the drawing board, <laughs> and I come back next year, 20 pounds, 30 pounds heavier, ripped to shreds, unbelievable, and uh, we're going to do battle. Hi, Rolf. Hi. <laughs> How did it go? It's a score. How did you play? Wie hoch sind Sie geendet? Ich war nicht unter den ersten zehn. Nein, das ist Und ja, die Vorbereitungszeit war zu kurz. Es waren drei Monate. Und äh, wenn man sich auf ein Olympia vorbereitet, dann braucht man wenigstens sechs bis sieben Monate. Uh, some of the people, I guess you always disagree, and everybody who's a fan of anybody, you kind of never agree with the judges. But I enjoyed it. It was a great show. It's been an awesome battle. I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to Lee, but we have yet to see whether we can do it seven times and actually surpass Arnold's record. For one. Come on, I'm back. the God, Father. I'm the God, Father. I'm the God, Father. Let's get this straight, there's no contest. So now you people know and don't have to guess. I'm not the king of rap, not lord, not prince. I was a young kid rapping, I've been rocking ever since. I was just a young fuck, I didn't care what. MCs were ever with another other than butt. I'm the godfather. 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 I'm the 
Now some of young ladies too just chill. They don't say no to me. Always say that they will do whatever I want them to. When I confront them to, watch where you're walking, or you just might bump into. I never rule them, I only school them. But if they ever try to fool me, that's when I fool them. I'm the Godfather. I'm the Godfather. No time to be jealous, only to make money. I rap on stage, shake my butt for your honey. Cause I'm a rockin', I was not stopping. The MC baby, who loves finger poppin'. So don't miss me, just kiss me. If I ever have you and leave, you're gonna miss me. I'm just a brother, so what's up, sis? Cause it's the pretty young ladies that make me talk like this. Yes, I'm the god of all. Say that I'm a poet. I changed my style. People just didn't know it yet. I had to tell them. I might tell them. You mess with me and both of your eyes. I'll swallow them. Well, like I'm a poet. I'm about to take charge. I've got a fish shine. Spank a new car in my garage. All the ladies want to use me. They don't move me. See my bank roll. They want to try to use me. But I'm no fool. Never losing my cool. And for me to understand, I'm making young ladies do. I'm not bragging. Telling you what I'm about. Young ladies, no babies. And marriage is out. But if you insist, you can come get this. Your house or mine. Night or day or be fine. So let's get it. So that I can hit it in an hour or two Me and you can just quit it, I'm the god The name of the game is quality, not quantity There's more than one than the other Something's wrong Lee has um, long muscle attachment sites He has full belly muscles His outstanding body part is, is definitely his back And I remember, I remember walking on stage behind him uh, on, at very, on various occasions. His back that takes up the whole front of you. You can't even see beyond him. It's sort of like walking on stage behind Ken Norton. It's like this massive body, this massive back is in front of me, and I can't see over it. It's like a big mountain moving. Uh, Lee has that same quality, and it's just like from the, when you walk behind him, it's like you can't see anything else. It's like a big shadow in front of you. I'm the god father. You know, it would be very unfortunate to have to train for the Olympia time and time again and come up second, third, or fourth. I'm glad I'm not one of those other guys. We were second grade sweetheart, and we dated for like eight years, and we've been married for five years. So how many years is that? That's a long time. A long we really time. got serious in a relationship when Shirley was 15, I was 16. And um, I played football. She, she was a cheerleader. She played basketball. I was a cheerleader. So <laughs> we have quite a beautiful history together. If it was not for Shirley, then I would not have been able to be as successful as I am today. Uh, she is my backbone. Shirley takes care of Lee Haney. She now takes care of Joshua. and. She makes uh, life and everything much more pleasant. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have a wife such as Shirley. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley, she was bashful about it. Oh, no. The intensity, I generally try to work towards preparing for the Olympia 12 months out of the year. The intensity starts to increase about six months away from the show. Uh, and then the final 12 weeks is when I really start to pour it on because the body cannot withstand uh, a great deal of punishment an entire uh, 17, 18 weeks. So 12 weeks is very intense. The rest is also intense, but uh, not mind blowing. When I go towards building more quality in the muscle, the repetition is ranging anywhere between 10 to 15. 10 to 15, and the sets, I generally increase uh, the sets by at least two per exercise. Come in close with me, baby. Hey. Come on, baby, let's go. Three more, three more. Hey. Generally, I always hey, use a good me, training partner because when I want to force a couple of extra reps, it always pays to have someone there and someone that is as intense as you are. If my training partner is not a plus for me, then I choose not to use one. 
This is it. This is one I want. Let's go. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there in Atlanta, when they we were having a freedom march, the clans there did stop the march and turn the the uh, freedom marches around and the whole nation and the world was appalled at what happened and I felt an obligation to be there at that second march and no matter what the cost was I'm, I know that there was a certain amount of danger that I would have to face but I could not lie there and sleep while uh, other men risk their lives and their safety and I sit around and reap the benefits of it because when it rains it does not rain on one man's house it rains on all men's house. I made it as a kid with a plastic set of dumbbells. You know, I didn't have a lot of finances. My family wasn't able to afford uh, to send me to college. So I had both legs broken trying to get a football scholarship, in which I was successful at doing so, which helped pave the way for my education. Well, when you massage your arm a little, like you said, it helps flush away some of the lactic acid. Give the muscle a chance to uh, relax, recover for the next set. The guy that had the less genetic potential, but then had the biggest heart as far as the drive and the determination, I'd have to say Rich Disparity. Because when Rich and I lived together and trained together back in 1984, I had no idea that he would uh, blossom or uh, become a competitive bodybuilder as he have now. It was beyond my wildest belief, and I lived with him. We lived together for a while, or he lived with me and my wife. And here he is knocking on my door for the past three years. And uh, he had a lot less potential than a lot of, of the uh, other pros that are now competing. But he had, he had a lot more desire. Rich, he's tough. He's a monster. Rich is, he's, he's one to be feared. You know, because he don't believe in giving up. Rich is a lot like me, but I feel that I'm overall more balanced. I have a better head for it. Rich is too intense, and too intense is not good. Mm -hmm. As far as Mike Christian is concerned, Mike is sometimes, he's wishy-washy. Sometimes he's a killer, next minute he's a pussycat. And he'll be a pussycat in Italy when I wipe him out. Come on, boy. You gotta train a lot harder than that to beat me. Yeah, just for you, Mike. Yeah, just for you. A lot harder, a lot heavier for me, boy. Just yeah. enough to blow you away the next three years. I'll see you in Italy in 89. Right. Me and you. Nobody else. Yeah. When the dead settles, me and you, big boy. Okay, okay. you better bring your luck. Don't run from me. Don't run from me next about. year, buddy. Okay. Okay. With me and both of your eyes, I swallow them well like I'm a phone. I'm out to take charge. I got a fish shot, I'm taking a new car, and my garage. All the things you want to do. There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken, so to speak. <laughs> you gotta be a comedian. He's a damn good joker. <laughs> One of the most important things that you want to do when preparing a poser routine is number one, select music that fits your state of mind, music that uh, becomes part of you. Because once the mixture of the two are together, that makes an unbeatable combination. It also makes a combination that uh, creates the air of confidence. And that's very, very important. The judges can see that upon your face and also in your performance. I make sure that the poses that I choose are ones that will bring out the best in my physique, which is also one of the reasons why you never see Lee Haney doing any uh, floor poses. A big guy don't need floor poses. That's only for midgets, okay? So in selecting your routine, make sure you select poses that are suitable to your physique. As far as overall genetic potential and uh, overall shape of the physique, the only guy that I would uh, look at closer would have to be Mike Christian. He has the size, uh, he has the balance, but still uh, his hunger and desire, I don't think is that of Lee Haney. I don't think he's as hungry as Lee Haney is. You know, I've uh, proven time and time again that I can successfully defend my title under any odds, under any pressure. I'm 5'11 and a half, 250 pound competition weight, on over 6'2", at 230, 235 pounds. And I have a more complete physique than he do. So, uh, but there again, not to be taken too lightly, 
Arnold was way ahead of his time. And I think if, even if you were to compare the other contestants with Arnold today, he would still be far ahead of them. Mm -hmm. My job now as Mr. Olympia is to uh, help motivate and show people, uh, minorities and all people alike, that uh, they can do. And all it takes is determination. You'll get your chance. Sometimes it doesn't come as quick as, as, uh, as you'd like, and there's a lot of hurdles, but you will get there. Right. You have to believe in that, because God controls the key to everything. I fear no man, no man can hold me down. Hopefully I'll be the image of what uh, I like for my son to be, a positive image. I want to stand tall enough so he can always look up to me and not look down. And so when I hand the staff to him, he'll be able to carry on and make a better world or uh, continue where his father left off. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Bless you. best you can be and always dare yourself to dream. I'll see you next year. This is Tom Plasser, Video 4. Bye-bye.